here's my assertion for the talk. Healthcare delivery is increasingly being influenced by two emerging concepts, precision medicine or precision health, and the learning healthcare system. So when we talk about precision medicine, what do we really mean by this? And there's been a lot of different things um, that are out there. So I, I like to give you my background and how I use these terms so uh, you at least understand that. So a lot of what we've been talking about is genomic medicine. And genomic medicine includes traditional single gene or rare disorders of which we've heard a lot about at the conference, or genetics, what I was trained in. And I went back to 1987 uh, to an article by uh, Pauker and Kassir, where they describe precision medicine as the practice of clinical decision making, such that the decisions made will maximize the outcomes that the patient most cares about and minimizes those that the patient fears the most on the basis of as much knowledge about the individual status as available. I think the future that's being envisioned is one of precision medicine, where we <coughs> provide care for diseases that can be precisely diagnosed whose causes are understood, and consequently we can use rules-based therapies that are predictively effective. Biomarkers are obviously becoming very important. They're one of the solutions uh, to drive precision medicine forward. And we know now that probability of success of drug development uh, increases significantly with a biomarker. So for those of you who know drug development, uh, we know from cancer studies that from phase one's approval you can move from under 10% success to over 25% success. Reliable information for rare diseases is scarce. Furthermore, resources are limited. There is lack of treatment and huge challenges to access adequate care. Finally, research and data information are fragmented. And specifically, I want to talk about three studies that are happening in Oxford, uh, two of which I can show you resources for, and the third of which I can show you some preliminary resources for. Uh, the first is a costing study looking at whole genome sequencing for rare diseases. Uh, the second is a quantitative evaluation of uh, stakeholder preferences uh, with respect to genomic testing for rare diseases. And then the third is some of the preliminary results of the work that's ongoing a lot of time on the National Genomics Project. So, what evidence exists in the economic evaluation literature for genomic testing in rare diseases? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, mentoring is, is very important, but at the same time, I think you will have to, you know, find your own way. And, and the way to find your own way, really, I think, big questions, but at the same time, you have to equip yourself with uh, the knowledge, right? Which means, practically, that you have to master the literature of the area you're interested in. It's um, also crucial in your, in your pathway to academic. It's just, when do you finish your training, and when do you become an independent person? That really, in order to keep uh, productive, and especially to keep creative, one would have to reinvent oneself once in a while. If the only thing that you can get out of that is that communication, especially to those that do not necessarily understand what we are doing is crucial. So don't undervalue communication. Here you go.